Y'all, I have never been so excited to do a haves and the have nots review. Like, y'all, this episode, this premiere episode, like, it snatched all my edges. Like, all of them. Like, halfway through, they were thinning out. And by the end of it, they were gone. I mean, y'all, this is season six, episode 11, titled Veronica's House. And let me tell you, honey, y'all remember that song by Jay Quan? I think everybody in the club getting tipsy. No. Everybody in the show getting busy. Like, everybody, y'all. It was a lot, but it was good. Like, it was like, bang, 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 bang. Like, I thought it, I thought Tyler Perry was going to slow down. But, like, that little two-month wait we had, that was worth it. Because this episode was everything. So, let me dig into it. Before I do, if this is your first time on this channel, go ahead, click that subscribe button. I promise to give you my take on everything, all the shows you love, and it's gonna be good, okay? Okay, so digging into it, of course, we start off where we left off with the Ice Queen herself. She has gotten David's address from Candace and is strolling up to the house, staring inside, watching David and Erica get into it on the steps, okay? So at this point, Veronica is like eerily calm. And you know when women are eerily calm, like you don't know what's happening next. So Veronica looks to the side and there is a brick conveniently located, like right, like five feet from her. She gets the brick, grabs it, and throws it through the window. So of course, like David comes charging out, Erica right behind him. David don't have on clothes, he got on boxers at this point. And so... Veronica is like, you bought her a house. And David is like, get out of here, get out of here, leave, or I'll call the police, get out of here. Veronica is like, this is my house. And I'm thinking, like, is Veronica tripping? Like, oh, like, this was supposed to be her house, right? She's like, no, this is my house. So Erica is threatening to call the police. Like, you better get out of here. I'm going to call 911. Veronica is like, honey, you can use my phone. Do you need a phone? Because you can use mine because I'm not going nowhere, okay? So then David is like, um, I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. Veronica is like, you're going to see me and you're going to talk to me. And then she was like, I remember when I bought you here. And I'm thinking, like, like this neighborhood? No, Veronica is like, she brought him to that exact house, said she wanted that house. He said it wasn't in their budget, so he's not buying it. Yet, it looks like now he has bought it and moved in this younger, more attractive woman. So Veronica, she is just like in shock right now. Like, I can't believe you did this. And I'm like, David, you said nobody would find you in this house. You failed to mention that this is your soon-to-be ex-wife's dream house. Like, come on now, David. Like, she didn't even need the address from Candace. Technically, she could have just drove over there. Whatever. Um, so then Veronica is like, you're going to see me a lot. I remember when I brought you here. And he's like, how'd you find me? She's like, honey, I will always find you. Okay. So he's like, don't come here again. She was like, don't come to my house because this is my house. And he's like, you need to go now. She was like, oh, but you know I'm coming back. So she is like, this is my house. So he like tries to like push her away, like just get out of here. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're beating me. You're beating me. Like she plays that game all the time. Same thing Candace does. So then David is like, you are violating your restraining order. And I'm like, David, you know, don't nobody on this show care about restraining orders. Like, come on. Like, Quincy didn't care about a restraining order. Um, and Veronica don't care about no restraining order. So she's like, you're always humiliating me and embarrassing me. You did it with Maggie Day. Now you're doing it with this thing. And he's like, okay, but you had our son put in jail. And she's like, well, he is guilty. And so David is like, oh, so you're going to talk to me about being guilty? Really? And she was like, oh, yeah, you feeling big and bad? Well, let's go there because I can lay it all out on the table, okay? I'm already mad. I'm hot. Let me just air out all of our business. Incriminate the both of us. Okay. So then Veronica is like, is that what you want? David is like, what I want is to never see you again as long as I live. And she was like, mm, well, you know, that may be sooner than later. And so he's like, are you threatening me? Veronica says, um, have I ever been one to threaten? Okay, like, 
I don't make threats. I make promises. Okay. So um, David is like, you put our son in jail. What is wrong with you? And then Veronica was like, you don't even care about what's wrong with your son. David is like, nothing is wrong with our son. She said, yes, it is. He likes men. And then so then all of a sudden Erica comes out of nowhere and it was like, um, you need to leave. You need to get out of here. The police are on their way. And David is like, no, no, no. Don't taunt her. Don't get her started. OK, you don't know her like I know her. Just go back in the house. Erica's irritated at this point. So Erica goes back in. She's like, this is ridiculous. Veronica says, you know what? She's right. This is ridiculous. And so are you. You are absolutely ridiculous. And David is like, you know what? I ain't got time for this. Like, I'm going back in the house. She's like, David, please, please do not walk away from me. David, don't walk away from me. And he continues to walk away, shuts his door. Like, there's not a huge hole in the door where she threw the brick and is staring at her and veronica is like y'all yeah, wrote this down she said i made you i put in all the work it's because of me that you can live like this i made you and you want to throw me away for some little two dollar piece of behind and you were nothing before me and you will be nothing without me and i promise you that and so i just feel like the claws are coming out yeah that that but i was so excited after that like so excited but anyways, then we have Erica and David in the house. So Erica, of course, is playing damsel in distress, but I think she like legit is like scared at this point. So Erica is like, is she gone? Like, what the heck? Like, oh my gosh, like I cut my foot and everything. David is like, I'm so sorry. He's being calm. She's like, I can't do this. I don't like drama. He's like, what you mean you don't like drama? Like, wasn't your ex-boyfriend abusive? And I'm like, David, like, dang, like below the belt like if you really cared about her like why would you bring up like the past okay although we know it's not true but like mm, that was the wrong move and so she's like no there wasn't drama like this this is ridiculous and David is like I'll take care of her she's like why haven't you already taken care of her he's like look I'm being patient with her and then she was like but why like she broke your window he was like okay and I'll replace it and I'll take care of her and if she comes back and breaks another one I'll be ready like just calm down. He calms her down. He tells her, like, they're going to get through this. So I'm like, dang, David, like, you still whip. Like, you might really love this girl. Okay. So then we have Hannah, okay? Hannah comes out, the lady in red, in her little tight dress. Hannah coming out, out with her stylist. She's just gotten this makeover. She looks legit like she's, like, Melissa's mother. Like, her hair is just like Melissa's. Hannah's dress is fitted. Hannah got on the lipstick and the makeup, honey. She is ready. So I'm like, what? Like, she looked like a different person than what she normally looked like. So she walks in to Benny. Benny's not paying her no attention. And then she asks him, what do you think? And he looks up and he's like, whoa, like, what do you mean? What do I think? Hold on. What? Like, you're not wearing that. Like, where are you going? She said, yes, I am wearing this. And I'm going on a date. He said, with what? With who? And she was like, none of your business. I'm going on a date. Um, why can't I wear this? He was like, a tight dress, makeup, lipstick, like you look like Halloween, like my mama is not going anywhere looking like that, she's like, boy, bye, mama gotta have a life too, so she didn't say that, y'all, but that's how she was looking, so there's a knock at the door, Benny is like, don't answer that, but of course, the girls answer it anyway, it is Derek, okay, her date, he comes in, and he's like, wow, like, you're so beautiful. Benny is automatically on the defense. Like, bruh, like, I don't know what you think you're doing, but you ain't going nowhere with my mama. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Like, asking all these questions. Like, it's interrogation immediately. And nobody's paying him no attention because, boy, bye. Like, your mama didn't walk in on you, like, in so many compromising situations. And you always getting your groove on. So let your mama get her groove back, okay? Hannah basically plays him to the side like he'll be fine okay Derek you know let's go ahead and go mm -hmm. so she's like excited about this date she's like good night Benjamin okay so Benny is like whatever I'm about to go okay we already know where he's going but I'll get to that later okay so then we see Jeffrey he's still in jail in the interrogation room at this point he's wondering why is he in there like Y'all keep pulling me in and out. Is my daddy here? Like, why am I here? So he's like, guards, guards. Next thing you know, the ice queen herself walks in. Now, mind you, this is after she already left David's house. So she already mad. So she don't have time for Jeffrey's games. Not today. Okay. 
So she walks in. She's like, hello, son. He refuses to greet her. She was like, did you not hear me? You're like, you speak when somebody's talking to you. And like, he refuses. So she's like, how are you? He says, like, what, what do you mean? How am I? Like, I'm not doing good. And she's like, he's like, you put me in prison. She's like, oh no, honey, <laughs> this is just jail. I mean, it's pretty bad, but it's not prison. Like prison is worse. Okay. Like they would love you there. Like when you get there, oh my gosh, they'll love you. Um, especially cause you know, you like the voice. And so he's like, you know what? I just want to get out of here. And she's like, well, you know, it's too late for that. You should have listened to me. Okay. You didn't. I told you to come home. I told you to stop talking to that girl. Now, mind you, she's slipping that in there, okay? She is now referring to Justin as a girl. I told you to stop talking to that girl. You want to keep talking to her. Then I told you to come home and be a husband to Melissa. You didn't come home, so where were you? And he was like, um, I was at the hotel with him. She said, you were at the hotel with who? I was at the hotel with him. I'm going to ask you this one more time. You was at the hotel with who? And he's like, I was at the hotel with, she was like, choose your words wisely. He's like, I was at the hotel with her because he got to play his mama's game. Okay. And so she was like, yes, that's very good. You were at the hotel with her. Okay. Well, I warned you. And this is what happens when you don't listen to me. Like, this is what happens. You end up here. And he's like, you know what? I just want to come home. And she's like, okay, so if you come home, will you be a husband, a man, and a father that I expect you to be? So at this point, he's willing to say anything to get out of here because he is not making it. He is not cutting it in jail. Okay. And um, they're not showing us like his time in the cell. I mean, he's really having more of a problem with Justin than anything, but whatever. So um, he's like, yes, I'll agree to whatever you're saying. And then Veronica's like, and you won't see that girl, that thing again. And he's like, yeah, okay, I won't, I won't see her again. Can I go home? And she's like, well, I don't know. It's not up to me. I mean, you're in the system now. That's up to the court system. So I'm like, Veronica, why are you playing with this boy? Like, just like dangling his freedom in front of him. And so uh, she's like, so you can't get me out? Like, you put me in here. You can't get me out? She's like, no, unfortunately, you're blackmailing in the system now. You know, I tried to stop this from happening, but you wouldn't listen to me, so now it's up to the system, but I can try to work on getting you out, I can try, I'll see what I can do, at this point, I don't know if I believe Veronica, but uh, whatever, um, then she's like, you'll be okay, I'll keep in touch, and then she even talked to more to be like, son, I love you, don't you love me, and she knows she's just playing games with him, like, he probably can't stand her, like, he probably, like, hates her, so he's like, Yes, mom. But he's saying it through like gritted teeth because he's being forced to say it. She's like, okay, it'll be, it'll all be okay. This is the best place for you now. That lets you know she ain't going to get him out of jail. Okay, so then she goes into the hallway and who is um, conveniently walking through the hall in Tyler Perry land? It is Justin. So Veronica is like, hey, girl. <laughs> like Miss Parker. And Justin turns around. She was like, oh, okay. So I see you know your name. So then Justin says, oh, but do you know yours? So he calls her a witch with a B, okay? And she was like, mm, that's real original. Like, I've never heard that before. I mean, that's like, sh come on now. Like, people have been calling me that for years. But you know what? I like it. Whatever. And so she's like, you still work here? Like, even after the video and all of that? He's like, uh, yeah, I still work here and she was like even with the video like online on the internet and he's like oh so are you responsible for that too and she's like oh no but your co-workers are I mean you know the code those boys in blue they really look down upon that but mm, that's why I'm shocked you still work here she's taunting him I don't even know that there's really a video that video is on the internet but we'll see um so he's like well what happened to you like referring to her accident and she's like I lost control of my car and remember, at this point, she was thinking that it had to be like Jim or David. And she had never even guessed Justin. But his dumb self can't keep control of his emotions. He don't know how to play the game. He's giving himself away at this point. Because he's like, are you sure about that? Then Veronica says, um, are you implying that it was you? And he's like... Oh, of course not. I'm just asking, are you sure? Like, it wasn't somebody that ran you off the road. So at this point, she knows because 
he gave himself away. And then she's like, I can't believe that a mere princess like yourself um, will come after the queen. I mean, one day all of you guys will realize that I'm the real queen. You guys are not the queens. It's some double shade in there because that's all Veronica does. Like, like it has to get draining, like tiring. Oh my God, she'd be perfect for a Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion. Okay, so she's like, I get under your skin, huh? And he was like, yeah, and I get under your son's skin. So this is like tensing her up at this point. Like, but that's the thing. He knows exactly what buttons to press. I don't know why she goes back and forth with him, but whatever. Um, so then she says, it's just us. Admit that you did it, that you ran me off the road. And then he's like, I would never. Okay. I'm an officer. And then, so she's like, oh, so how's your wife though? Because, you know, it has to be a lot on her, especially like finding that out in a public place. I mean, that had to be so humiliating. And he's like, OK, so how's your husband? I heard he traded in the grandma for a young, new, hot, spicy thing. And that really bothered her. She showed it all over her face. Like she shows like when you like pinched her and it hurt. So Veronica is like stunned, not saying anything. And then Justin is like, well, you know, me and Jeffrey pillow talk. So he pretty much tells me everything. So yeah, I heard about it. And you know, we pillow talk because we're lovers, right? So Veronica is still stuck at this point. So Justin is like, oh, by the way, when he gets out, we are moving in together. I hope you get a housewarming gift for us. It'll be great. <laughs> like Justin has become a real good at these comebacks where he didn't used to be. So then Veronica is like, well, you don't worry, well, you don't have to worry about that because Jeffrey will never get out. So Justin is like, oh, you want to bet? She was like, well, do you know something I don't know? He's like, maybe. And then he walks away. So clearly Justin got a plan to get Jeffrey out of jail because Justin really does want to have like a happily ever after with Jeffrey, even in the midst of their craziness. Okay, so then we have Hannah and Derek on their date. You know, this was probably like the calmest, chillest scene of the whole show, okay? Like, they genuinely were having a good time. They genuinely like each other. Um, When it gets to their scene, he's like, I'm shocked. And she's like, well, dang, don't say it like that. Like, I know I dressed up, but dang. And he's like, no, like, you're just naturally beautiful. Like, you're naturally stunning to me. And she's like, wow, you really think that? And he's like, definitely. And she's like, like, oh well thank you um so then he you know asked her if she drinks she says she drinks beer but that ain't really a beer type of restaurant okay they're both super dressed up thanks to Catherine putting the bug in their ear um so he's like um how about some wine and she's like yeah give me that rich people wine I mean it's like playful laughter back and forth so he gets her that but he doesn't order himself any because he doesn't drink so I'm like uh like, what's your intentions? Are you trying to loosen her up? I know Hannah's a little stiff, and I'm going to say, I'm going to give Derek the benefit of the doubt. He seems like a nice guy. Like, he might not be trying to, like, get in her pants or nothing, okay? Although everybody is getting busy on this episode, it is not them two. So, whatever. He gets her some, like, wine, and um, he talks about, like, you know, like her history, her employment history, like she used to be a maid for Catherine. She says she's going back to be a maid for her because it's an honest living, unlike one of her kids. And like she just vaguely talks about her kids, but how it's like hard being a parent sometimes. Um, he says he understands because he has three kids in college. So, I mean, kudos to him. Um, then they like talk about his deceased wife, wife momentarily. You can tell that really affected him because he really loved his ex-wife, but he's on a date with Hannah. So he's trying to move forward. Um, then he tells her like, you know, after dinner, we're going to go dancing. At first she's like, nah, buddy, it's too late. Like I'd be in a bed by nine o'clock. She didn't say that, but she did say it was too late. And so he's like, I mean, I just want us to go out and have some fun, loosen up a little, good scene, good music. So like Hannah finally is like, okay, you know what? That does sound fun. So she's genuinely excited, which is good because Hannah has been depressed for a minute now between Benny, Candace, and then Lil Quincy passing away. Like Hannah was in a dark spot. So it's good that like she's able to smile now. Okay. Okay, so then we have Benny goes over to Veronica's house. Remember last season, um, Melissa took Veronica's phone, text Benny, pretended like she was Veronica and said, come over here about six. You don't have to call or anything. Just come over. Okay, so Benny shows up to Veronica's house. Melissa opens the door. It's a little dark in there, okay? Like, but he's like, okay, where's Veronica? And she's like, I don't know. 
he still doesn't realize it's a setup and he's like okay well i'm leaving she's like well actually i want to talk to you about yesterday then he kind of realizes like oh like maybe like I shouldn't be here. And then he's like, no, no, no. Like, we don't have to talk about yesterday. Like, I'm sorry. I should have, like, you know, gotten control of myself. Benny has no control. Um, And she's like, no, like, that was the best I've had in a long time. And he's like, you mean ever? And she's like, no, don't flatter yourself. A long time. Okay, I've had better. You could have did better. And I'm like, girl, you said that to him on purpose. Like, because it was a challenge. Duh. And so he's like, what do you mean? So at that point, she admits to sending the text and pretending to be Veronica. So he's like, dude, this is crazy. I don't want to be a part of this. I'm leaving. Of course, he barely fights it because she's like all over him, rubbing on him. Like, Benny, I don't even know why he plays. Like, stop playing hard to get, Benny, because like, you know that you're easy to get. Like, come on now. So um, he's like, barely fights it. First of all, Melissa opened up her robe, okay? She had on her lingerie. And I'm like, Melissa don't look a day pregnant. Like, she don't look five minutes pregnant, y'all. Like, I'm going to be shocked if they go to the doctor this season and she's really pregnant. Like, she had to fake a pregnancy test or something because there's no way that she's pregnant. Like, come on now. Like, she has freaking abs. She's not pregnant. But whatever. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. And if she is pregnant, like Tyler Perry, y'all don't have to do better. Like y'all should have had her like eat like some ice cream or like burgers and tacos or something. Like she should have had a little pudge or something. Come on now. Okay. So whatever. Um, so at that point, Melissa is like, let's just have it do what it do because I don't care about Veronica. They get on Veronica's white couch and start risking their lives. Okay. They start going to town and I'm like, this is about to be a bloodbath if Veronica walks in here. But they don't care, okay? Because they're not thinking with their heads. And Benny's definitely not thinking with his, okay? Um, so then we have Candace in the hotel room. Her and Oscar, remember last season, she called Oscar up to her room. And she said that she was feeling frisky. Well, she actually really did, like, get intimate with him. So they got busy, okay? He's in the restroom washing his hands like, man, I forgot how great you were. And while he's doing that, she gets some type of drug, slips it in his drink. It's a powder, so it dissolves. He comes back to the bed. He's like, okay, so are you ready to be first lady now? Like, do you want to join my plan? She's like, no, like, I just don't think I want to do that. Like, do you really think I'd be capable of that? He's like, yeah, like, you could like, just be in there like four to eight years. You'll get book deals. You'll make all this money, like millions. Like, it'll be great. Like, but it's a long process, but a slow process, but bigger money. And and she's like, you know, I just don't want to wait that long. Meanwhile, he's still trying to convince her, but he's taking sips of his drink, okay? She's just watching it all. So he's like, are you in? She's like, no, nah, I don't think so. And then he's like, come on, there's no way for you to get millions at this point. Like, you got to think big. And she's like, actually, no, I think I can. And this one, she gets up off the bed. So he's like, really? Now you think you can? So how are you going to do that? So his vision starts blurring. And so she's like, Oscar, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm just a little lightheaded. And she was like, yes, this is good. She starts smiling. So he's like, Candace, what did you do to me? And then she's like, oh, don't worry. Just lay down. I know you're tired. You're just going to sleep for a little while until noon tomorrow, okay? I have stuff to do. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so um, the, after she admitted to that, he falls asleep on the bed. She grabs her phone, goes and gets his laptop, um, puts some information from his laptop in her phone. That's what I'm thinking she's doing. Calls the bartender, tells the bartender downstairs to make sure he watches Gia. That's her girl worker that's working downstairs, okay? And so he's like, okay. Um, she gets whatever she needs off the laptop, puts it back, and then she walks out. Okay, so then we get back to Melissa, okay? Melissa and Benny on the white couch. Melissa is putting in work at this point, okay? Yeah, Melissa has no care in the world. Like, there was no privacy. She act like Veronica don't have a key to her own house. Like, she can't walk in at any point. And Benny is just dumb because, like, he can never say no. Like, ever. Like, Benny needs a girlfriend, okay? Because he just... He needs to be tamed, okay? So um, she's putting in work, okay, with Benny on the couch. And Veronica walks in looking shocked. Like, 
Are you kidding me? This is the second time in one day that I didn't walked in on a man that I've been intimate in the past being intimate with another woman. Like, come on now. Like, I don't, y'all gotta give me a break here. So she's like, what in the world is going on here? And then Benny is like, hey, like, why do people react that way? Like, like, what do you mean, hey? So she's like, hey, hey, what? And then so they're like rushing to get dressed, Benny and Melissa. Melissa is laughing, though. This girl is nuts, okay? So then Benny is like, um, I thought you were here. I thought you called me. That's why I came over here. So Veronica is like, you know what, Benny? Get out, okay? Get out of my house. Melissa is cracking up, okay? So then Melissa says, this is hilarious. Like, this really is. And then... Um, um, and then Veronica's like, you know what? That's it. I've had it with you. I am so sick of you. And then Melissa's like, you should be ashamed. He doesn't want your old behind. And then so Veronica's like, no, but he wants your dumb self. And then so um, Melissa's like, me? Dumb? Veronica's like, uh, yeah. Like, you allowed me to manipulate you. You allow your mother to manipulate you. You're stupid. You are a, a fool little girl. I'm going to show you a, a grown woman's game. So then she walks away, and Melissa had the nerve to yank that perfect ponytail on Veronica's head. Like, and at that point, like, it was on. Like, when you grab a girl's hair, like, but then the ponytail, too, like, I know that hurt. And grabbed her hair, and they start, like, going back and forth swinging. Like, Veronica is not thinking about the baby at this point. The baby, if there is a baby. And Benny jumps in to attempt to break it up. So we still don't know what's happened with that fight because it cuts commercial. But anyways, we have Jim and Catherine at Wyatt's house, y'all. Yeah. This is deep, okay? This was another jaw-dropping scene. So Jim and Catherine, they are sitting there. They're going back and forth because they always argue. Jim is like, can you believe what he paid for this place? Catherine is like, yeah, I can believe it. And um, she was like, he's his father's son. So Jim is like, what? I would never do anything like that. And you know it. She was like, yeah, I know. He is his father's son. She was like, he's like, what? Are you implying he's not mine? And I'm like, hold on, pause, Catherine. Like, you playing, right? Like, I know you had your little rendezvous, but, like, really? Like, you mad at Jim because he didn't have all these extra girls? Meanwhile, like, it's possible that Jim is not the father of Wyatt. Like, that's going to be a trip. Like, what? What, Catherine? Like, okay, whatever. I hope that comes up in this season. But whatever. And so he's like, are you suggesting that he's not mine? Catherine is like, I'm suggesting that um, you're not a lot of things. There's a lot of things that you're not. And so Jim is like, whatever, girl. Like, what would you even do without me? Like, you would be out of control. And she's like, no, I wouldn't. I would be free. I wouldn't have to deal with all of this nonsense. And I would be in the arms of my Latin lover. And so whatever. They start arguing back and forth again. Um, um, eventually, they stop talking about nonsense. And Catherine, she says she wants to call Wyatt. Jim says you can't call him. We're, we're just going to wait for him to be here, okay? I know the maintenance man let us in, but we have to pretend like the door was unlocked and we just got in. So let's just wait for him, okay? Um, Catherine is worried about the DA, um, especially trying to investigate them. Um, and then with Jennifer Salison's murder, and at that point, Jim is like, you know what, I'm going to take care of it, don't worry about it. So then Wyatt walks in, okay? He is pissed off to the highest level of pissivity when he sees his parents. And he's immediately like, you guys need to get out. I'm going to call the police. Jim grabs his phone like, bro, you're not about to call the police. We're not about to do this, okay? So when he takes his phone, he also reaches in his pocket and grabs a whole thing of Coke, okay? I think it's Coke. It's some type of drug. And at this point, I'm like, okay, it looks unopened. Like, he never opened it. So Wyatt carried that whole thing home and never did it. So... Okay, that's a step, but I mean, he still would have had that that much drugs in his house. So whatever. Um, so after he grabs it, Wyatt is freaking out. Jim runs to the sink because he is going to open up this package and dump it all out because he doesn't want his son to have this. So he is wrestling with him back and forth. Wyatt's wrestling with Jim. Jim is getting a knife, cutting the package open, trying to empty it all out with the sink turned on. And so Catherine is behind Wyatt trying to get Wyatt off of Jim. And she, she's like, no, 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 honey, you don't need it. Wyatt is like, I'm sick of y'all. So he like backhands his mama. Like, 
Like he literally slapped the mess out of his mama and she went sliding across the floor. And I'm like, what, Wyatt? Like you are tripping. So then Jim, he don't like Catherine, but he's like, Wyatt, like what are you doing? Like that's your mother. So he pushes Wyatt out the way, goes down to the floor to get Catherine, try to help her up. When he stands up, Wyatt is like, I'm sick of you too, gets a bottle and cracks it across Jim's head. I'm like, Wyatt, like, are you on drugs right now? Like, are you tripping? Like, I know you don't like them, but dang, like, whoa, like, this is like a moment of rage. Like, he was outside of his own body at that point. So after he cracks him on the head, Catherine is trying to help Jim, and then Wyatt goes and gets a head statue, a statue that is a head and is like holding it over his parents about to drop it on them, like to smash them and kill them. And I'm like, whoa, buddy, slow your row. Goodness. Like, yeah, like, and then the episode went off, of course. So we got to come back next week. So whatever. If it's your first time on this channel and you stayed this long, you may as well click that subscribe button. I'll be back next week for the next review. And I hope you all enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.